Okay. Yes? Anyone know who this is? Anyone? Britney Spears. Yes. Very good. Whoops. Anyone know who that is? You probably don't. That's Bonnie Pasco. I wonder how much it costs for Brittany to be a star for a day. I have no idea. Thousand dollars? I don't know. I do, however, know how much it costs for Bonnie to be a star for a day. That's approximately five dollars. So I'm really fascinated by how people become role models, how people become heroes in the world, how they end up on the front of glossy magazine covers, how they become revered, admired, and yeah, leaders in the world. It, uh, I find that really fascinating. With um, Brittany, I bet there's dozens, hundreds, thousands of young teenage girls who have her plastered all over their bedroom, maybe guys too. But with Bonnie, I bet she's not on anyone's bedroom wall. Actually, I've had the great privilege and pleasure of meeting many young people like Bonnie, who overcome so much overcome so many obstacles just to get through each day. And then they go further. They do things that most of us wouldn't have the guts to even attempt. And how many of these young people are there? Well, what if, what if these young people were our heroes? If these young people became the people who were on the front of glossy magazine covers, who were admired and adored. How many are there? Well, statistics tell us there are around 32 million, at least, in the world. Around about 200,000 in New Zealand. And so far, there have been 500 or more, more or less, who have become part of Star Jam. As it happens, I have a brother who has Down syndrome. And there's a story, and many people ask it, and so I will, I will tell you what happened. My brother, Ross Moses, I asked him to give me away on my wedding day. Uh, my husband and I got married in Cornwall Park, for those of you who know Auckland. It was a beautiful day. We were in the park, and it got to the part in the ceremony where the celebrant said to Ross, will you give your sister away in marriage? And he goes, no. <laughs> anyway, we got past that point, and then at our um, party afterwards, uh, we were sitting around and people were getting up and they were giving speeches. Uh, it was a wonderful occasion, of course. And Ross looked around and he thought, oh, you know, yeah. So he got up and he gave this uh, spontaneous speech. It was absolutely amazing. He, it was so moving. It was just from his body language and his gestures. And unless you know Ross, really, really well, it's very difficult to actually understand what he says. In fact, he was institutionalized at birth and I didn't even know I had um, this brother Ross until uh, we were both in our teenage years. So uh, when he gave this speech, I looked around and everybody was in tears. It was so moving. And I thought, gosh, you know, here's somebody who's considered nobody in our society who's made a greater contribution to our wedding than all of our friends of 30 years. But the real part was, afterwards, just like that, people started treating him like a real person, 
So it used to be, you know, hello, Julie, hello, Rossi, you know, and, and then it was, you know, hello, hello Julie, ho, hi, Ross, how are things, you know, and just like that, he became a real person. So that thought did um, just rotate in the back of my mind for some years um, until a little prompted by uh, turning 50 about 20 years earlier than I expected to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I thought, I, you know, I really have to do something. Um, I really want to do something before, you know, I leave the planet. And so, and I was very, very happily married. I couldn't keep having weddings all the time um, to create this situation. So I thought, I want to create a platform um, where young people with disabilities can just be the best they can be, they can be their, just be themselves, and people can see how magnificent they are. So uh, in the next couple of minutes, you'll see a video which just summarizes very briefly what happened from that point when, we, um, when my husband and I started uh, Star Jam and where it is today. Yeah. Well, I've basically always wanted to walk, but ever since being with Star Jam, I'm glad that I'm in a wheelchair. I love Star Jam to bits. That's it. start and I can't get enough of it, I always want mm. more. Thank you. So at the moment, we're running uh, about 17 different performance programs every week. And I've met a lot of amazing people, and I would, could stand here all day telling you the stories. I would like to tell you just one. That's about Helen, Mary, and Jack, their brother and sister. They joined our program last year. Uh, Mother had some doubts about whether they would be able to be involved. She said they had behavioral problems, all manner of problems, and we said, look, just let them come along. So they did. Um, there were some challenges, I must admit. However, with the, the way we work with the young people, uh, the belief that everyone has talents, that their talents will emerge at the right time for them, and with peer support in a non-competitive environment, real magic will happen. And it surely did. Uh, the other kids in the workshop said, you know, when they got up to sing, they'd say, you rock man, you know, and, and they got really confident and their confidence grew and their talents grew and uh, they just started to be, um, yeah, fantastically uh, talented young people. 
showtime at the end of the year. All of the young people in the programs are invited to be in the show at the end of the year. Uh, the mother brought Helen Mary and Jack along backstage, ready to be in the rehearsal, uh, rehearsal here and makeup on stage. And um, she stood there and she didn't go. And the, the volunteers, the team of volunteers backstage said, no, it's okay, you can go. And she said, no, 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 I can't. And they said, no, no, yes, you can. And, and she said, well, I've never left my children anywhere before. So uh, with a lot of coercion, she did actually leave. Helen, Mary and Jack, they went through the rehearsal. They're great. Uh, hair and makeup, fantastic, on stage, performed fantastically. And the mother was in the audience to see that. And then after the show, I uh, happened to be in the foyer outside and the people milling around leaving the uh, show and I saw uh, Jack and Helen, Mary's mother, coming through the crowd towards me and she was crying, uh, just a waterfall of tears. And she got up to me and she threw her arms around me and she said, because of Star Jam, my kids aren't broken anymore. So, Helen, Mary and Jack didn't just change uh, the dynamics in their family, they changed the dynamics for a lot of people, uh, a lot of people who saw them, um, including uh, the Prime Minister, uh, they were part of a performance for the New Zealander of the Year Awards at the beginning of this year, they, they performed and um, the Prime Minister was impressed, we're pleased to say. Um, so there's another side of this whole deal actually, there's the people who see the jammers, as we call them, perform. Sometimes it has quite a profound effect on them. And I wanted to tell you about John. Uh, that's John there. He is the father of one of our jammers. And he's been to many events, actually. But last year, uh, in the recession, John was... Uh, made redundant. He lost his job of decades, pretty much the only job he'd had uh, during his life. So, uh, understandably, very upset, down, depressed. Um, yeah, wasn't sure what he was going to do. And in the middle of all that, he volunteered for a event for Star Jam, a show we were putting on. And he came away from that, woke up the next morning, and he thought to himself, I have no right to doubt myself. When these children are doing that, what right do I have to doubt? So he actually went back to his former employees and had a talk to them. And he said, I want a job. And I don't know how he did it, but he did. He got a job with his former employees and a better job than the one he had before. So um, <laughs> um, we're uh, very... I just happened to hear that story incidentally, it, would, it just came out by the by. Um, so very grateful to um, John for telling us how that happened. So back to Bonnie. There's a lot of people like Bonnie, there's just a, a few of them on this picture. So over here we've got Brittany, right? and then over here we've got Helen, Mary, and Jack, and Bonnie, and hundreds of other young people. And then we've got John, and we've got you. So what if you also thought that would be a great idea, a great thing, if these young people were our role models, if these were the young people who were on the front of glossy magazine covers, if these were the people who we admired, who we looked up to, imagine if that was in our communities, in our countries, in the whole world, imagine what a place we would live in. So, as we say, I don't know, you may have got jammed or not. If you have, you may be wondering what you can do. Uh, there are many things that are happening all the time, but this is just a very uh, small sample of the things that are going on. Um, would you like to help us spread the jam? Um, we have a, a campaign called Money for Jam. Uh, 
It's a, it's, a, it's a busking challenge. You can start a team and go out and feel that buzz that the uh, jammers do when they go out performing. Um, step outside your comfort zone and do that. Uh, you can support a team if you feel like that's a real, real big challenge. Um, and you can check in other fun things that we are doing. Uh, check in on our website to see if we've broken the world record for air guitar. So that's a, another fun thing that's um, coming up. So just before I uh, finish and leave you with that thought, uh, there's somebody I would like you to meet, actually. This is my brother. <laughs> so I, I just thought it would be nice for you to meet uh, my brother, Ross, who was the inspiration um, for Star Jam and everything that he has inspired so many people. So I would like to thank you very much on behalf of all the jammers um, for your attention. Thank you very much.